In this video, we're going to look at the idea of vector resolutes or vector projection. And the idea is that we are going to project one vector on another. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's give them two vectors, A and B. So here's A, here's B. Can we find that part of one that is in the direction of the other? And that part of the same one that is perpendicular to the other? All right, so let the first vector be A and the second be B. So here's some vector A, any vector, just some vector A, and here's some vector B, okay? And we want to find that part of vector A that is in the direction of vector B and that part of vector A that is perpendicular to vector B. They're the two things we want to find, and that'll be the focus of this video. All right, so this is also called vector projection as well as vector resolutes. And the way to think of that is you could imagine, all right, here's our vector A. I'll just move it over here. Here it is. Hopefully I kept that the same length and parallel. So here's our vector A. Okay. And um, better tilde. There we go. And okay, what we want to know is what part of this vector A is in the direction of B. So we want to project this vector A onto B. What's the vector, what's the projection of A on B? So that we end up with this object here. This part of the vector A, which is the projection of A on B, this vector here, what is it? How do we find it? And then further to that, okay, so we want to find what part of vector A is in the direction of vector B, and we'll give that vector some name shortly. But then also, what part of vector A is perpendicular, and entirely and solely perpendicular to B? What's this one? Okay, so it's these two that we want to find. That process is vector projection, okay, or vector resolutes. All right, so, okay. Now, to start that process, we, we can express, we can express the vector A as the sum of two vectors at right angles to each other. So before we do anything with vector A, we can express this vector A, whatever it is, an arbitrary vector, we can express it as the sum of two other vectors. And these two other vectors, which we will call U, and W are at right angles to each other. All right, so there's vector U here, plus then vector W, and the sum of the two gives us vector A. So we've broken, decomposed vector A into two vectors. Okay, vector U, vector W, and these two are at right angles to each other, hence the 90 degrees. Okay, lovely. Now, um, Okay, so we can, uh, okay, so the A can be expressed as a sum of two vectors at right angles to each other, and then we're free to pick these vectors such that one is parallel to B, okay, and one is perpendicular to B, okay? So we've got this vector here, U, which is going to be, we've chosen it such that it is parallel to vector B, okay? So we've got some vector going this way, all right, and then um, we're going to have perpendicular, that will be W, and we've picked it that way just to give you the idea of vector projection. I mean, okay, we're still, we're going to project this vector onto this one and we're going to see what part of A is in the direction of B and what part of A is perpendicular to B because those two parts, U and W, will add up to A, okay? Now, if U is parallel to B, then U is some constant times B and that constant K belongs to the real numbers. It could be less than one, Okay, so that u is shorter than b. It could be greater than 1, so that u is longer than b. Okay, but it's just some number, so that the vector u is k times b. k won't be negative in this case because u points to the right as b points to the right. Um, u is pointing in the same direction as b, and so this won't be negative. Okay, u is in the same direction as b. All right, now, we also know from the argument established above that the vector A is made up of the vector U plus W, okay? So U plus W. And we can rearrange that and write W by itself. 
So we now have an expression for w. It's now the vector a minus the vector u. So if we take the vector a and we add on the negative of u, okay, that would take us across here, and then the sum would be up here like that, okay? So it gives us vector w. Now, what else do we know? Well, we know that w is perpendicular to, to b, and so that the scalar product or inner product of the vector w with the vector b is zero. Um, and that must be true because we know that uh, the vector u, the scalar product of the vector u with w is zero because we've set u and w up to be at right angles to each other. Okay? And we've set w up to be at right angles to b, so w dot b must be zero as well. Okay. Okay, now, to find the part of A in the direction of B, that is, the part of A parallel to B, we need to find the expression for the vector U in terms of A and B, okay? So we want to, want to find what U is, and we want to find what W is, but in terms of the vectors A and B, because, because remember, it is the projection of A onto B. We are doing something to A and to B, and we want the end result whatever this u is, to be in terms of a and b. That's the point of this activity. Um, and we also need to know what this k is. What, what's k going to be? Okay, so just keeping that in mind, can you bear in mind the picture because I'm just going to move away from the picture at the top of the screen. So what is k? All right, well, w dot b, well, we found the expression for w, that was a minus u. Okay, remember that right here, a minus u. So a minus u can be, we can substitute the vector w for the vector a minus u, dot that with b, okay? Now we know that u is parallel to b, because we had this bit up here, okay? So we can replace the u with k times the vector b. So we have a minus k times b, in parentheses, dotted with b, and we know that's zero because we know that w is perpendicular to b, and so that's perpendicular to b, that's perpendicular to b. Okay, um, almost got it. The only thing that's missing now is what is this k? All right, here we go. So what we've got, then from here, if I expand out the parentheses, I've got a dotted with b, so a dotted with b, minus k times b dotted with b, minus k times b dotted with b. Okay, now let's take the right-hand term onto the right-hand side. So we get a dotted with b, is k times, a constant k, times b dot b. So let's, now b dot b will be a scalar, that's just going to be a number, so we can divide both sides by b dot b, and we're left with the uh, number k, the scalar k, is a dot b on b dot b. Okay, so that's what our scalar k is up here. Okay, so for the part of a that is parallel to b, for the part of a that is parallel to b, that's the vector u, u is a dot b, because remember we found k is a dot b on b dot b, so u is k times b, because remember u is k times b, so k is a dot b on b dot b times the vector b. Okay, so that's, we now have a clear definition for the vector u in terms of the vectors a and b. The perpendicular part's not hard, that, that hard to find, because the w we found earlier, w was a minus u. Remember, w was a minus u, we found that earlier. So the vector w, that's the part of a that is perpendicular to b, is the vector w. w is a, the vector a, minus a dot b on b dot b times b. Okay? So this here is the project, u is the projection of a in the direction of b. Okay? The projection of u, uh, the projection of a in the direction of b gives us the vector u. Okay, and that's found by this. And the bit that's perpendicular to B, okay, is this bit here. Okay, okay, let's move on a little bit here and just look at some examples now. So let's just remind ourselves of the picture again. So given two vectors, we can find the component of one that is parallel to or perpendicular to the other. Okay, and we've got some vector A, some vector B. We decompose A into two parts that are perpendicular to each other. One part we chose to be parallel to B, and then the other part perpendicular. Okay? Okay, so we've got U and W. Okay, now, A is equal to U plus W. You can see that from the diagram, U plus W. Okay, now, the part um, U parallel to B 
and W perpendicular B. So remember that the U we chose to be parallel to B and W as a result, because W is perpendicular to the U, it is also perpendicular to B. So the bit, the part of A, the projection of A in the direction of B or the part of A that is parallel to B, right? A in the direction of B, the projection of A onto B or the projection of A in the direction of B, is the part of A that is parallel to B, and that is U, which is A dot B on B dot B times B, so A in the direction of B, projection of A in the direction of B. These are just the words to describe it. The perpendicular part to B is W, the vector W, is A minus the vector U, which is A dot B on B dot B times B. Okay, so let's have a look at an example of how to use this. Um, okay. I'll just move this stuff a bit. Okay, here we go. So given the vector A is 3i minus 4j plus k and B is 2i minus j plus 4k, find the component of A that is parallel to B. Okay, find the part of the uh, vector that's in the direction of B, so the projection of A in the direction of B, so the projection of A in the direction of B, A dot B on B dot B times B, and just vector U in other words. Okay, well, A dot B, we can do that, three times two, minus 4 times minus 1, plus 1 times plus 4 at the top here. Okay, underneath B dot B, so with itself, so 2 times 2, minus 1 times minus 1, plus 4 times 4, see so down here. Okay, B dot B. And then over here we just put right out the vector B again. Okay, working out the numerator here gives us 14, and the denominator gives us 21. So 14 over 21 times the vector, simplify that down, 2 over 3, times the vector here. Okay, so that's the vector u. That's the projection of a in the direction of b. That's what we mean by the projection of a in the direction of b. Okay, how about um, when we project a in the direction of b, what is the perpendicular component? All right, so let's find the component of a perpendicular to b. So a perpendicular to b, well that'll just be a minus the, the, the part that's in the direction or parallel to, to b. This bit here, so just take the vector A, here it is, minus the result we found up here, the parallel part, minus 2 on 3 times that. When we work our way through that, we'll have 5 over 3 times this object here. Okay, hope that's all right. Okay, one more thing, I've been talking in terms of vectors here. What about if you just want the scalar part? You just want the scalar resolute of A in the direction of B, okay? We just want the scalar bit. Okay, we don't want the um, uh, we don't want the whole thing. Okay, um, and then all you want for that bit, the scalar resolute of a in the direction of b, is simply a dot b on the modulus b. Okay, that's all that is. a dot b on modulus b. Okay, is any? Uh, I hope that's all right by everyone. Um, Okay, um, and that's it for vector resolutes.